Margaret Atwood's masterpiece, The Handmaid's Tale, is the envisionment of what an extreme society would look like in America through the creation of Gilead. The norms and values of this society shines the light onto the reality of modern American ills, in particular, America's discomfort concerning sexuality. Atwood lists the possibility of a dramatic religious theocracy in any given country, no matter their global status. The first American ill concerning sexuality is the discomfort with queerness. As a matter of fact, homosexuality has been very frowned upon for many generations. It can be difficult for homosexuals to feel welcome and integrated in our society, while some people are still against it completely. In the United States, as early as the turn of the 20th century, several groups worked in hiding to avoid persecution and to advance the rights of homosexuals, but very little was known of them. With time, the group expanded and came out. However, there have been many consequences. For example, on June 12, 2016, 49 people were shot and killed by Omar Matin during Latin night at the Pulsey Gay Nightclub in Orlando, Florida. The shooting was the second deadliest mass shooting and the worst act of violence against the LGBT community in American history. With time, however, there has been progress. On June 26, 2015, the U.S. Supreme Court held in a 5-4 decision that the 14th Amendment requires all states to grant same-sex marriages. Still came some negative re reactions to this new law. There were protests against the court's decision in front of the Supreme Court. In a tweet of former governor Arkansas and then also Republican candidate for the 2016 presidential election, Mike Huckabee wrote, This flawed failed decision is an out-of-control act of unconstitutional judicial tyranny. Margaret Atwood decided to illustrate this flaw in her novel by illustrating what she thinks might happen if our society decided to s not accept homosexuals as they are. Indeed, in Gilead, gender treachery is punished by death. The accused stand charged with gender treachery in violation of Romans chapter 1, verse 26. Here is a quote to further demonstrate this idea. The two others have purple placards hung around their necks, gender treachery, their bodies still wear the guardian uniforms. Caught together, they must have been, but where? A brax, a shower, it's hard to say. Homosexuality is seen as treason to the society since fertility is at an all-time low. The notion of gender treachery is used by Atwa to illustrate the discomfort modern America has with sexual queerness. She raises the inequalities the LGBT community faces in modern America through this extreme restrictive society of Gilead. This translates into the contemporary society where homosexuality is viewed as sinful. Furthermore, in modern America, we observe a leniency towards male sexuality, yet a repressive behavior concerning female sexual freedom. Men are allowed hypersexuality. Two common idioms that embody this notion are boys will be boys and locker room talk. Firstly, boys will be boys is a logic that trivializes male behavior at all stages of their development. It serves as a strong signal to our current society, separating our expectation of women from those of men. It is a phrase that, in many ways, captures the root of gender inequality in modern America. I thought these kinds of places were forbidden. Hmm. Officially. Unofficially? Oh, we turn a blind eye. Everyone's human after all. Moreover, locker room talk is another example of the dismissive attitude America has developed regarding inappropriate sexual conduct. Our current president, Trump, first faced allegations of sexual misconduct when the Washington Post published a recording where he described in vulgar detail how his status allowed him to sexually assault women. He later apologized and brushed it off as mere locker room talk. Men are allowed to be sexual and open about their sexual quote-unquote achievements, contrary to women who are shamed. Atwood illustrates this through the creation of Jezebel's, a government-issue whorehouse, which brings to the surface the issues regarding gender inequality. She fosters the need to take action and to stop using the excuses of locker room talk and boys will be boys. We observe this through the commander's translation of those idioms, you can't cheat nature. He expresses that nature demands variety and solely for men. Moira explains to Offred that Jezebel's allows the high-ranking men of Gilidian society a crummy power trip and that they enjoy seeing the women all painted up. We've got quite a collection. They prefer it here. 
Lastly, the sexual freedom men have in modern American society comes into juxtaposition with the strict religious ideologies that structure the majority of the country. The U.S. has always been influenced by religion, mainly Christianity. The Washington Post states, Christianity is by far the largest religion in the United States. More than three quarters of Americans identify as Christians. In addition, when the president swears into office, he does so over the Bible, just as witnesses do in a court of law, and the American motto is, in God we trust. Yet we notice a constant war between religion and sexuality, because in religion, marriage is a holy union between two individuals under God, and sex out of wedlock is a sin. Sex is considered taboo in American culture, and the topic is not openly discussed because of the strong influence of religion. In religion, the only purpose for intercourse is to have children, thus why the topic is so taboo, as it is not perceived for pleasure. Margaret Atwood displays the contrast between male hypersexuality and religious ideologies through the handmaids. The commanders not only have a wife, but a handmaid, as well. In this quote, the kneeling woman is the handmaid, and the seated woman is the wife. Through the scene, we catch the presence of a union between two individuals that are not married. This is contrary to American religious beliefs. In the Galidian society, intercourse has purely become a procreational activity and is no longer one of love or intimacy. We see this through the rivalry between the wives and the handmaids. You will stay here, and you will not leave this room. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? The wives are in a way competing with this new woman who legally must bear her husband's child. They no longer are allowed to be sexual active with their husbands, and thus envy the handmaids. In conclusion, what we've seen here is that Margaret Atwood inspired herself from American context, more specifically American ills concerning sexuality, such as the discomfort with homosexuals, gender inequality, and the conflict between sexuality with religion's values. This is part of the source of inspiration that guided Margaret Atwood to write The Handmaid's Tale. So to open a new discussion, here is our question to you. Do you believe that Margaret Atwood has faith in modern America?